so today I'm going to be talking about and showing you guys how you can set up pin OS on your Raspberry Pi 4. So if you're not familiar and you do not know what this is, this is an operating system which you can install on your Raspberry Pi and through this you can install lots of other operating systems and make a multi-booting system. So this is really useful if you're like me and you're, you like to test out different operating systems and you don't have enough SD cards or USB drives or something like that. So I am going to be using a USB drive. I did, I did have a 500 gig drive, but yesterday it just stopped working. So that was a big bummer because I was going to be using this for this project and have a lot of operating systems on there. So the biggest drive I have right now is only 64 gigabytes. So let's, I'll see how many operating systems I can install in here, but it should be good enough for now. But I probably will have to get a bigger drive soon because I kind of need it. But to get started, all you have to do is open up your preferred web browser, go over to pin download, and you go to sourceforge.net, and you're going to download pin. So it was just updated recently because they've added all support for some new operating systems, which I was kind of excited about. So this operating system really does work well, and it's so cool that you can have all of them on one drive. And there's actually most operating systems for the Raspberry Pi are on here. Some ones that would be really cool to have, let's say like Windows on Raspberry Pi would be really awesome. And maybe Manjaro. I didn't seem to find Manjaro. That was kind of odd because I thought there used to be it, but yeah. But I am USB booting in this video. You can do this on the SD card, but you do not have to. So it just depends on what you want. So you just open up your file manager or finder if you're on Mac and you see the pin light, you just up, you're going to extract it. And it's going to just give you a lot of files. It's not going to give you an image. So you might be like, hey, what do I do with this? I don't know how to do, what to do with all these files. Well, what you have to do, you're just going to copy them over to a USB stick. But first, you have to make sure if your USB stick is FAT32. So to do that, I'm just going to open up Disk Utility, find my USB stick, and I'm going to erase it as MS-DOS FAT32. I'm just going to erase it. If you're on Windows, one thing to note, you can't erase disks larger than six, um, 32 gigabytes to FAT32. So you'll have to use a third-party third party tool like Mini Tool Partition Wizard or something like that. So you just download one of those and then format it to FAT32. If this is not FAT32, your operating system will not boot and you will not be able to use this. So just definitely do a FAT32. So you open up Pinlight folder and you just con Command A or Control A on Windows and Linux. You just take this and plug it over into USB. And it's going to copy all those files over here. So it doesn't take that long because these aren't very big files. And then you just plug your USB stick or SD card into your Pi 4 and boot it up. I do want to mention this works on the Pi 400 too, so you won't have any problems with that. And you see, we can make sure I can open up my USB stick. And yeah, it's all here. So we are ready to boot this up and get going. So plug it into your Pi and boot it up. Okay, so here I am. I booted into PinOS without problems. If you were using Wi-Fi, it would ask you to sign into your Wi-Fi, but I'm using Ethernet, so I did not have anything like that. But here's the, all the operating systems available. Let's take a look at the operating systems, and then let's install some. So we have Raspberry Pi OS Full, which has applications, Raspberry Pi OS with the, just the desktop, TLX OS, Android 9, Android 10. We have Twister OS, which is really nice. You know how much I love that. We have Ubuntu 20.10, which is, uses GNOME. We have Ubuntu Mate, which uses the Mate desktop environment. We have Gentoo 64, which is Gentoo Linux, which runs pretty well on the Pi, but I just don't really prefer it because I don't like the package manager that much. We have NS Spawn 64, which is Raspberry Pi OS with a 64-bit kernel, but it's still 32-bit user land. So it's kind of confusing. I don't really use it because now we do have that beta 64 image, so I just use that instead. We have Media, we have Libra Elec, which is like Kodi basically. We have Lineage 17, Android TV, which is Android 10 TV. So I'm also a fan of that, it works really well. You could also install that to watch some movies or whatever. We have Minimal, we have Raspberry Pi OS Lite, which does not use a desktop. 
Apps, Arch, which does not use a desktop, Diapi, it does have a desktop, but it's super lightweight, and the Pi 4 doesn't really need this much light of a desktop, in my opinion, so this, I don't really use it, but it's really good for like a Pi Zero or Pi 2 or something like that. We have Gentoo 64 Lite, which has no desktop install on it either. Utility, and these are just some other utility things that you might need in the future. Games, we have Laka, Recall Box, RetroPie, and Batocera. So if you're into emulation, you could also install some of these and just check them out. You might enjoy it. Then we have testing. So these are testing images. We have Raspberry Pi OS 64, which I just mentioned a minute ago. And this is fully 64-bit Raspberry Pi OS with a 64-bit kernel plus a 64-bit user land. So I would recommend using this instead of that other one that was back there. Then we have Raspex 4, which is Ubuntu 18.04 with LXD, which I don't really recommend either. It's kind of an outdated version of, of Ubuntu anyway. So to get started to install operating systems, let's see how easy it is. So I would probably want Raspberry Pi OS 32-bit because I enjoy that a lot. I want Android 10. I would not recommend Android 9. It's kind of slow. Android 10 is a lot better. Twister OS. Yes, I want Twister. So I could either go with Ubuntu GNOME or Ubuntu Mate. I'm going to pick Mate. Even though if it does look uglier, it's easy to ins um, theme and make it look better. And it's more lightweight, so it will run better on your Pi 4. But that's personal preference. I don't really want Gen 2 or NS Bond either. Those aren't really my things. Media, I'm not going to... I don't need any media right now. Minimal. No. Games. I'm not super into the emulation stuff, so. I could go with Raspberry Pi OS 64, but let's just stick to these four operating systems right now. And yeah, but one thing I do want to know, you need to pick all the operating systems you want right now. Or later, if you try to install more, it will wipe all the other operating systems and just install that one. So you need to think ahead and install operating systems or it won't work. So right now I have one, two, three, four operating systems picked. That's all I want for now. I'm just going to hit install. Warning, partial USB support. The following OSs can be executed from USB. Yeah, so it's just giving you a warning that the Lineage OS is in beta USB mode. I do know that. So yes, you want to install them? Yes. So it's just giving getting everything ready and then it's going to start installing them downloading them from the internet and installing it all in my usb drive so this the time this takes it depends on your internet speed basically okay so finally all of my operating systems are successfully installed and you know that by it says they're successfully installed right here so what we're going to do we're going to hit okay and look here the four operating systems that I had choose before are all, are, are all here. So what one do I want first? Hmm. I guess I'll go with Raspberry Pi OS, I can say. And I, I can hit boot and it'll boot straight into Raspberry Pi OS. So let's try that out first. Okay, so here we are and I am in Raspberry Pi OS right now. Everything looks right, it all looks clean, it all looks good. The only thing that doesn't look that good is all these discs. And you ask why they are? Because what PinOS does is it takes your SD card or USB drive and it partitions it up into tons of little partitions to fit all the operating systems on it. So these are all the different boot drives and stuff like that. So like this one is for Ubuntu Mate because Ubuntu Mate is called System Boot. So it kind of clutters up your desktop and makes it look not that good. So to fix that, all you'd have to do is you have to right click desktop preferences and you're going to go external disks and you're going to uncheck that hit ok and there we go our desktop looks so much cleaner now and so much better and you can do anything you want it to do really like if i want to install nail fetch so to apt install no fetch hit enter and it should install for me and it's so easy because you can have ton of operating systems all in the same drive whenever you don't like the other one or whenever you need a different operating system for a different project. All you have to do is switch between them. So here we go. Hit no fetch. There we go. Our system information. Look at here. It is so nice. 
I can scroll through all these things, do everything that I want. It's super easy, super clean. So now let's go to a different operating system and check that out. So all you have to do to switch operating systems is reboot and pick the one you want and you're ready to go. And here I am in Ubuntu Mate. It's the install script. All you have to do is set it up and you can get Ubuntu Mate set up. So yeah, Ubuntu Mate works well. I'm not gonna install it right now because that could take some time, but it's this easy to switch between the operating systems. This easy, like, oh my, it's so awesome. Okay, so here I'm in Twister OS, and it looks amazing. And it's just this easy to go to the boot menu, switch to whatever operating system you want, and and then boot into it. It's this easy. Like, that is just amazing. And, okay, so if some people are like, Berry Boot or Pin OS, which one do you prefer? I do have to say Pin OS, because... Berry Boot is nice because you could use all your storage in each operating system, which in PinOS, it divides your SD card, so you only have a limited amount of storage in the operating system. But if you ask, why do you like PinOS more? That's because it te uh, has more operating system support, in my opinion. And one more thing, that Berry Boot turns the files into the squash FS files, and whenever I try to boot some operating systems on there, they always give me a kernel attack. Like, Twister OS is one of them. A lot of times I would try to boot it, and it would give me this kernel attack, and i have to keep on rebooting until it would boot into the desktop. And that just gets really annoying and old when it keeps on doing that, and you just, you kind of get tired of it. And I've switched over to PinOS and had a much better experience. It works so much better. I can do everything however I want, and... Yeah, it's just really nice. So I would recommend using PinOS to do this. If you have a big drive, definitely try it out on like a big drive and install tons of operating systems on there. You'll have a lot of fun playing around with all of them and just seeing what you can do with them. One more thing to mention, this isn't the latest version of Twister OS. It's only one point, I can't tell right now, but it, so you, you can just use the Twister patcher and update it real fast if you do install twister os but yeah so i'm a big fan of pin os definitely recommend you trying out any questions about this hit me down below in the comments and yeah don't forget to subscribe